Support companies that help support the Stony Ridge Farm. Subscribe to the channel and contact Farm Fence Solutions for all of your fence building and tornado wire needs. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. It's another beautiful day here and the hot day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. Today we're going to be working on our fencing project here and we're out in front of the house. This is about, yeah, I'm going to say a three and a half acre pasture here that we're going to be rotationally grazing our cattle on. But we can't rotationally graze our cattle on a fence that's this high up in the air. <laughs> so today we're going to show you guys some pretty cool tools. We're going to show you exactly how we get this fence wire, this net wire, and this is Titan. 13 48 12 in other words it's 48 inches high and this is tornado wire it's 48 inches high there's a 12 inch stay spacing and there are 13 line wires okay so this is one heck of a tight fence and this is a high tensile type woven wire fence so today we're going to show you among other things we're going to show you how we attach to the post we're going to show you how we get this fence wire down to where it needs to attach to this post and we're going to just go around and show you a little bit of stuff of how we wrap this all up so we've got some gates to hang pretty simple stuff there and we also have some areas where the fence isn't quite this high so we can just push down on it and attach it to the post this is the worst spot and this is going to be the fun spot so come along and we'll learn a little bit together here on the stony ridge farm all right Woo! Okay, so we have an abundance of tools here on the back of the Kubota. This is the Kubota X1140 from Rocky Mount Tractor. I love this machine. We also have a John Deere Gator. This thing is a great farm machine. If you need to get somewhere in a hurry and work, the John Deere Gator is a great machine too. So, and that's the 825i that we have. So this is a net board, a wedge type net board. And what happens is we're gonna take this, and we're gonna put it up against the fence and we're going to, hold on, I gotta knock one of these out. There we go. These wedges, <laughs> maybe I'll knock it out. Come on, buddy. <laughs> there we go. So this wedge holds the wire in place. In other words, we take our net wire and we go right up against here and then we drop these wedges in place and then we tap them with the hammer and that will hold it onto the net wire right here. And again, this is tornado wire. Titan is the type of knot. 13, 48, 12. 13 line wires, horizontal wires, 12 inch stay spacing, and 48 inches high. Pretty cool. So this net board is gonna go right up here in front of the skid steer. We'll show you that. Oh, we're gonna have to chain the bottom of this net board and you see, let's lift it up here. You've got some loops right there. So we'll chain to the bottom of that and we'll wrap it around the pallet forks on the skid steer and we'll push it down and then we'll tie it to the post. And let me show you what we use to tie it to the post here. So each one of these posts all the way down the line, I'll pick the camera up and show you, all the way down the line here, each one of these posts will have ties on it. This is a post tie for our two inch line post okay so what we're going to do i have a special bit and you'll see that here in just a second as soon as i set the camera down i've got a little dewalt drill right here and i've got a special bit you see inside that bit that's designed to take this right here it fits in there as it's around the post hold steady and twist okay so it'll twist until the ends right here break off pretty innovative little design there um, all this stuff came from Farm Fence Solutions out in Worthington, Indiana. I'll post a link down the video description for you. And this is our farm fencing shirt. So if it ain't tight, it ain't right. And that fence is tight, man. We built all this stuff last week. So what we've got to do, and this will be my first time hooking to the pallet forks on the tractor or on the skid loader and pushing the wire down. This has been the highest spot on the whole farm. We haven't had any big dips 
on any of the fencing that we put up so far except for right here so we're going to show you how we do this in a real high spot and again it's probably three and a half feet up in the air and then we're going to show you how we do it over in a spot where we can just push it down so in some places along the fence line here we'll have to raise up on the fence in some places you'll have to lower down on the fence Sometimes it helps to have at least two people, maybe three people, and I've got my helper. He's coming across the field right now. All right? Now, this all might seem so super simple, but it's really not that simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back the Kubota up to about right here, and we're probably three feet from the post that we want to attach to. I'm going to back up to there. I'm going to put my wedge uh, net board on there, and then we're going to raise the forks up on the uh, tractor, and we're going to go ahead and tie our chain on then we're going to take the forks on the pallet forks right here on the uh, skitty bop there and we're going to mash it down we're going to tie to this post we're going to tie to that post we're going to tie to as many posts around here as we possibly can now if this was way way up in the air we're going to need some type of bracing underneath here to keep this thing from turning into an arrow going ding, pulling it right out of the ground so that's what's up it's not as simple as you think Now, you can see how high this wire is, and it's pretty bouncy. It is super duper tight. There's no way, I weigh about 260 pounds, and there's no way I can pull this down on my own. So, oh, get our wedge type strainer board here. I'm gonna pop all these wedges out. Now, again, we're about two feet from the post here. We're gonna put our wedge strainer board up here. What we want to do is catch two rungs of wire. In other words, two rows of wire with each one of these, okay? So it'll line up just right. There we go. We'll just drop our wedges in. So all the way along this fence on the bottom is one strand of 12 gauge high tensile wire. And I've got a hold of it right here. You can see it. So we've got to make sure that we get that in the appropriate spot and the appropriate spot is down low okay so we want that down close to the ground you've got two little knobbies right here i guess two little holes and you want to drop this wedge in to encapsulate one two of these line wires okay now these line wires get closer as we get further down so you might get three as you get down lower but the biggest thing is i don't want this high tensile wire somewhere in the middle i want it all the way down at the bottom so we'll get this guy lined up. Now, you might be asking, Josh, why in the world don't you just take the pallet fork, stick them in there, and pull down on it? Because it's going to destroy the wire here. It's going to destroy this net wire. We don't want to do that. We don't want to pull things apart. We're in the business of making stuff good. All right. Got those two in. Just like so. Okay, knock that one down. And now our last one will have our stretched wire. And this is what we use for our straight edge because we don't use a piece of mason string or anything like that. This is not affected by the wind. It's not affected by anything. You don't run over it. You don't catch it with the tractor and break it unless you really mess up. So we'll slide this down to the bottom. And I actually don't quite have this in right. I'll show you what I messed up doing here. Our strainer board goes way down below the level of our fence. So we need this actually up. So we want this to be the bottom of the fence. Let me raise it up. Simple enough. Sometimes we do it right because we do it twice. Okay, William, my helper, Wild Bill, come on through here and if you will, stand on the tailgate of the uh, Kubota for me. I think we're gonna have to call William Woody. We're finally going to have to start calling him by his real nickname. William, squat down here. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> William has been helping me on the farm on and off for since you were 18. He's 22 now. Yeah, yeah 25. So 25 now? Yeah. Holy cow. Since he was, <laughs> he's been helping me for a while. 25. <laughs> I wish I was 25 again. <laughs> All right, so don't let me hit your finger. Go Actually ahead. grab this board down low here, and I'm going to pop this out. Okay, you're going to take it that way. And it's heavy now there you go bring this all the way up to here all right there 
And I'll drop this lower wedge in first. Just like so. You want it straight up and down in the middle. There you go. Nice. Oh, life is so much better with a helper on the farm. We're getting to the point on the farm here, guys, and I don't know if you if you don't follow the channel, please jump in, pound the like button and follow the channel, but I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna have to have somebody here all the time to help me because things are getting a little bit hard. <laughs> all right. So now we're gonna bring Skiddy Bop, our skid steer right here, over and figure out how to get a chain wrapped around those pallet forks. Man, it would be so nice if this had a groove that would fit the pallet fork, but it doesn't. So we're gonna wrap a chain through those loops and pull this down. So let's show you what we did. I actually took this uh, logging chain right here and I took the hook off the end. This is the hook. I just took it off the end and I ran through here. I'm gonna run it back through here. We'll reinstall the hook real quick, very simply. Uh, and then we're gonna hook it on itself and we'll have a loop about that big. And that's what we'll put our pallet fork in. Now, when we drive this down, we want it all the way down to the ground. And you see there's a little bit of a gap right here, okay? Typically, we leave about a two inch, three inch gap underneath the fence. So if we can get it down low enough, we will. And if not, we can always take the pallet fork and push it into the ground just a little bit. Cool. see that we weren't close enough to the post so we didn't get the board down low enough we were about that far from the bottom of the post so we're gonna actually have to move this wedge board down probably two more sections about another 24 inches Okay, now you can see that enormous amount of tension has been solved. Now we've got to pull this, and William's job is going to be to lean this towards the post. We've got to touch the post, and I'm going to put the post ties on real quick. There are going to be 13 strands here, so there'll be 13 post ties, and we're going to do 13 on this one, and we're going to go up three. One, two, three posts. We'll put 13 all the way down, and all the way down this direction right here, and then we'll go ahead and attach uh, all of our ties and we'll show you guys how we do the ties. You'll see it here in a second But we'll show you in a little bit safer area the actual technique, okay? Whenever we're pulling downward, we want to start at the bottom if we're pulling the fence upward In other words, if this was laying down on the ground too tight, we're gonna start with the top So your best pull is from the bottom. That's what we're doing Now This is a hazard to animals, okay? And we'll give you a little more detail in a second but we want this to be rotated around to the side here okay we don't want that thing sticking out and we'll... <laughs> come on Jawal, don't let me down now there we go we didn't have the drill set quite right so we'll do the next one here so we can continue going so we're doing the same way every time okay we'll pitch so, rotate around twist it off. Okay, we'll get you a little close up here in a second. Now, we're getting up here and William's going to have to lean against the strainer board, I guess you call it the net board, uh, in order to uh, get this thing all the way up against this pipe. It's important that we do not fudge this, guys, okay? Now, you'll see when I twist these off in the future, you'll see the ends break off. If we can find the ends, they're not dangerous or anything like that drop them right in there but they'll just kind of go into the ground all right we're 
we're up here at the very last one. Wiggum is pushing. Woody, <laughs> Woody is pushing. I needed a sidekick, man. I've been needing a sidekick. <laughs> so we'll get this on here, rotate it to the side, squeeze that trigger, and we're good to go. Now, we're gonna leave Skitty Bop on here, Skitty Bop Skid Steer. We're gonna leave them on here until we get three posts down the line tied on and three posts up the line here, okay? So what William's gotta do here, we're about this high off the ground. He's gonna push it down to about that high, two and a half inches, three inches or so, something like that. We don't want baby cows to get up underneath it. That's the idea right there, okay? All right. Typically, when we're not holding a lot of pressure on here, like he was with his foot, then we don't really have to worry about uh, this thing springing back up. Once we get four ties in place, no worries at all. Once we get up here, we'll show you exactly how the tie works. Here is the tie. It's exactly how the tie works. So, we take the tie, it looks like a U, put it right over top of the wire, then we go off to the side right here, and then again, this bit, you see that little groove? want those two wires to line up with that groove. It's pretty nifty how it all goes together. There we go. We'll get it nice and snug. Squeeze the trigger. And typically the ends right here will break off. That one didn't really break off. Typically both ends will break off. That's it. That's how it's tied to the post. Now you think about that. We got to go to every single post. Every single post will have at least five ties on it. That's a job. That is a job. Okay, so that's what we got right here. Now I didn't notice that this post was so high. You see how that one's really high? So it's sitting right on top of a rock and we'll just cut that guy off right there. All these posts will get post caps on them because songbirds and stuff like that can fall down in there. So we'll make sure we do that. And also water will fall down in there. And I did a little test the other day. I ran a water hose right into there just to see if it would drain out. And I filled it up and three days later it was still only about an inch low so what that tells me is these posts could fill up potentially with water in the winter time if we had a cold winter freeze and it could cause some problems so we'll be capping every post keep songbirds out and keep water out here we are at a situation where the fence is just too low and what mr william or woody will do here is he's going to lift it up and basically set it right on top of his steel toe boots again two and a half inches or so up off the ground okay it's going up Right there, set it down on that steel toe. Perfect. If we're pulling up, we want to attach here first. If we're pulling down, we want to attach here first. Educational moment here on the Stony Ridge. I hope you guys are learning a little bit today. We're gonna have to do a Milwaukee versus DeWalt challenge here soon because this thing is absolutely a pig right now. I don't know, maybe my battery's weak. All right guys, it's time to hang a gate. This is our strainer post or our brace post and actually it's going to be our gate hanging post also. So there are two hangers welded in here. You're going to get a close up in a second. There's a hanger there and then there's a hanger here. When we finish, one hanger on the top should be facing down. The other one should be facing up. So we pinch our gate into place. We don't leave the upper hanger up and the other hanger up because you can just lift it right off. So a cow could get its nose up in there and boom, butt the gate and Bye bye cows. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna mount it down that way, up this way. We're gonna sandwich it in. Now there's a little adjustable gate hanger on these gates and the lower one is stationary. So what we'll do is we'll hang the lower one on here and we're gonna eyeball this first and make sure our gate hangers look like they're gonna be appropriately level. In other words, we'll unscrew this gate hanger to match that gate hanger right there. I'll show you. Here's our gate post. This is our upper hanger and it's gonna finish up facing that way, okay? But I can see more threads here than I can see down here. So clearly, the lower gate hanger is gonna have to come out. We're gonna turn it out two turns. We'll just use a uh, adjustable wrench, a crescent wrench, just like this. We're just gonna turn it out. Sometimes you can do it with your hand, just like so. We're gonna give it one, two turns out. Now, the amount of threads exposed here and the amount of threads exposed here are just about exactly the same. Now we're gonna turn this one out of the way and we'll get our gate and hang it right here. So we're gonna lift this up on the hanger, just like so. And now we can see this adjustable portion is gonna run right into there. I'll show you how we fix it. So this is the adjustable portion. Some gates will have 
two of these that are adjustable, but all we do is take a 9 16 socket, deep well socket, loosen that guy up to where he'll flop around. Just barely loose, okay? Then we're gonna turn this guy downward, just like that, and we're gonna check level on the gate. Now you can see this is gonna hit. We got a problem here, but we'll work it out. We'll take that, we'll turn it out just a little bit, and we'll knock it into place. Now, let's look at this gate setup right here. So where we are is on a hillside. This, the top of this post is higher than the top of that post. So this gate is not gonna be perfectly level. It's gonna be with the plane of the land, okay? So it's gonna be level to the land right here. So we're not looking for a perfectly level gate in this situation. Typically, if we're in a flat spot, then we would put a level, this level right here, uh, up on the top and we would check level, right dead center, okay? We'll also check level here, and that's how we'll level the gate. So let's see how this works out. This is gonna be a little bit of a tight thing and gotta kinda finagle it. Up just a little, see how that's in the way? Keep going up, come out, right there, up. Okay, he might get mad at me. Up, <laughs> down just a little, right there, hold it, hold what you got, okay? See how we got that to line up? Now, she's all lined up, ready to rock and roll. We're gonna tap this piece up. Will you lift up on the gate a little bit? There you go. Okay, we wanna go all the way up against there. And then, we're gonna tighten up our gate hanger, just like so. Now you can see this gate is sticking up in the air a little bit. So we're going to go down here and show you. So we got a bit of a predicament here. We got a little bit of a rub right here, and this is a 16 foot gate. So whenever we make a 16 foot gate opening, it's 16 foot three inches. This one's going to be a little bit tight. So what we've got to do here, and you can see how it's lining up, it's way up high and we're going to have to drive by this every single day. So I don't want to look at a mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom one and we're going to bring it in as far as we can bring it in. And then we're going to take the top one out and we're going to make it just fit just right in here. And that's all we can really do, okay? We're going to have a little bit of a gap here below in the low spot. And that's basically all we could do. In hindsight, I don't think there is hindsight here. In hindsight, we probably would have been better off putting our gate up that way, just a little ways. But can't do hindsight. It's already built. Fence is built, baby. We'll show you what we do. Kind of in a pickle right here uh, there's a flat spot over there we could have showed you but we'd rather show you <laughs> when we get in the pickle it's okay that's real life man that's what living on a farm is all about that's what the youtube channel here is all about so what we'll do is we'll tighten that nut down and then we'll have our gate and we'll show you how we run the chain on our gate real quick and then we'll let you go hopefully you guys are learning a little bit here we're going to show you a way of latching your chain that'll keep your animals from escaping on their own they'll figure that out horses are smart cows are well, kind of smart. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around our post. We're gonna drop our chain into the groove like so. And then we're gonna take our chain and go back to the hole. So whenever you lift up on the chain, it's pulling it tighter. If you had it the other way, and this is on the outside of the fence. If it was on the inside, it would really be dangerous. But if we have it, if we don't tuck it down through here and set it up where it pulls that in tight, what you run into is a cow or a horse or whatever might figure out and rattle that out and cause it to fall <laughs> it's, it's on there pretty tight but cause it to drop out so in other words the best way to keep your cows in latch it in just like so drop it down through there that way when it pulls it pulls it back tight cool guys i hope you learned a little bit today we're just wrapping up things tying things up we probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of <laughs> a thousand post ties to put in here so Sun is going down on beautiful Appalachia here, and we're going to let you go. And we'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm Vlog, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me. Thank Woody for being here with us. And we'll see you next time on the farm. All right? Woo! Woo! There we go. <laughs> see y'all next time. We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your